Now in his fourth season, Randy Foy is in a comfort zone. He's playing an important role on his new team, the up-and-coming Washington Wizards. In fact, Randy's been seeking some level of comfort since he was a kid. Orphaned at age five, Randy was looked after by extended family, but it seemed only a matter of time before he would fall prey to the dangers of Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, it's definitely tough because there's so many different things, different negative things that is going on. It ain't fair for a young kid. You feel as though the only way you will fit in if you join the negative things. So how did Randy avoid the temptations of his hometown? Little by little, adults formed a protective circle around him. AAU coach Sandy Pionin saw something besides athletic talent in a 12-year-old Randy Foy. He was very polite. He was very quiet. He was a very giving person. If I would give him a dollar, he would give half the dollar to his friends. To this day, Randy considers Pionin the closest thing he has to a father. But Sandy knows that Randy's rock was the support he received from relatives, in particular, great aunt Ruth Martin. As far as I'm concerned, it all starts with Ruth. I guess it's the house that Ruth built. I think it all starts with that because he had to go back to her every day and he had to live there every day. And that street that he was on wasn't the greatest of streets. I just opened my door. Whenever he wanted to come in, he could come in. Whenever he wanted to eat or whatever, he, he was always welcome. When Randy hit high school, the circle would extend even further. Randy started to skip classes and would often come late to school. That's when he came face to face with basketball coach Bryant Garvin. My first impression was who was this knucklehead coming down the hallway dribbling a basketball. These days go by like a cold, cold fire. I saw a young man, he needed discipline and he needed some guidance. And that's what I basically gave him anywhere by all means necessary. I did everything imaginable just to save him. Garvin didn't only look after Randy at school, he also took him into his house on weekends so he wouldn't fall prey to the streets. I used to play with his daughter, his wife used to cook, and we used to just sit there and we would watch films to probably like 12 o'clock at night. Well, I could have called him at four o'clock in the morning and said that I'm here in Newark and I'm having problems, can you come get me? And he would have been there to come get me. But still, Garvin realized something was missing he knew Randy needed the kind of support he couldn't provide. And soon, the circle would be complete. I was special ed teacher at Eastside High School, and Coach Garvin was a crisis teacher. And he was the person who did the late door. He'd say, oh, I have a kid that's always late. He's on the basketball team. And Coach Garvin said to me, Missy, I think we need somebody to oversee him. He needs a little bit of mothering. Even today, Maria Contardo plays a special role in Randy's life, staying connected with the young man she helped nurture. Hey, is your other mother? You don't have to call me back. I know you're probably flying or you're traveling, but I just want to tell you that, that I'm here, we love you. She's doing it from the kindness of her heart. I think if I didn't meet you, it probably wouldn't be no Villanova, no lottery pick in the draft. He's come a long way. I, I, you know, I couldn't be prouder than any kid I ever had, especially coming from where he came from. Now that he's found success, Randy is forming a new circle. He actively supports young people just like him who are trying to navigate the challenges of Newark. It's not too many stars from our city that actually come back and do things for kids, but for Randy to do that is real inspiring. I decided to start a program for my foundation, it's called Assist for Life. Right here in this playground, that's when it came to me that I had to start my foundation because of a situation where I saw a younger kid, he was walking, and he was one of the better players, but he didn't have shoes to play in. He saw probably what myself and other people did for other kids, and that it made a lot of sense, and that he wanted to do that also. This was one of the kids right here from the um, Assist for Life program, the first day. You know, he a big kid, he a tall kid. He might be something. Nah, I'm joking, he is gonna be something, man. 
If I could tell y'all anything is that being here today, you know, you don't have to be here tomorrow. If you work hard, like I always tell you, that you can go anywhere you want to go.